There are two scripture readings today for the first Sunday of Advent, and I'll begin reading from the Romans passage, chapter 14, or sorry, chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Let us listen to God's word. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. Let us again listen to God's word. But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Over the last several days, many of us, I'm sure, have enjoyed some time with family and friends and perhaps some time off from work for Thanksgiving. There's a lot to love about Thanksgiving, and here's some of what I love about Thanksgiving, and maybe you can relate to some of this. Uh, One is I, I love the fact that there's nowhere to be on Thanksgiving other than where dinner is. Right? That's the the main agenda for the day, typically, is get to where the food is. That is an agenda I can easily get behind. I also love the fact that now, uh, and I don't know how this happened, I think maybe years of slowly pushing the boundaries, but in my family, it is now acceptable to wear comfy clothes to Thanksgiving. We consider this, in my generation, a huge triumph. Uh, But really, it's a, a practical matter because elastic waistbands are crucial for the transition between dinner and dessert. I assume if you're laughing, you relate to that. I also love that the night winds down in in a turkey and football-induced trance, right? Where the TV's on, the room is dark, and you sort of hover between sleep and wakefulness. But into the tranquility of Thanksgiving comes these... Advent text for today, issuing an abrupt, wake up! For as long as I can remember, I have hated the lights being turned on suddenly and abruptly in whatever room I happen to be sleeping in. It's so sudden and it's so cruel, and the people that do this know that. (laughs) Right? But that's kind of how I felt after reading these texts for this first Sunday of Advent. I mean, some of us have just started listening to Christmas music. And we're, we're getting into the spirit of the season. And here comes Jesus in Matthew's Gospel saying things like, But about that day and hour no one knows. Keep awake, therefore, because you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. And as if that wasn't ominous enough, he evokes the the charming story of Noah and the flood, saying that the coming of the Son of Man will be a bit like that. And then there's this business of some people being taken and others left behind, and then a 
a curious metaphor and puzzling metaphor about a thief in the night. One last indication of what Jesus' return will be like. So if we're feeling at least slightly unsettled, that is a good thing. Because it means that this apocalyptic text is working on us. Apocalypse means revelation, and apocalyptic texts in the Bible are deliberately provocative and rich in metaphor. They are uh, designed to stir us. Uh, Throughout the history of the church, uh, apocalyptic texts have been used in all kinds of ways, often very unhelpful ways, especially ones that try to pinpoint exactly when and how the world is going to end and exactly who it is that is in and who is out. But for our purposes today, it's enough to say that fundamental to apocalyptic literature in the Bible is the urgency in knowing two things. The first is, what time is it? What time are we living in? Capital T, big sense time. And the second is, who is the primary agent in this revealing or the unfolding of God's future? Besides this, Paul writes to the Romans, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. The night is far gone, the day is near. The time that Paul refers to here and elsewhere is the time between the ages, between the present evil age and the age to come. In Jesus, the powers of the present evil age have been defeated, and his church is called to be a sign and a foretaste of the age to come. The decisive battle ensuring victory has been won in Christ, but many skirmishes still remain. So indeed, we live in the time between the ages, and this characterizes the Christian life at all times, but it comes into a particular focus in this season of Advent. Uh, Episcopal priest and author Fleming Rutledge puts it this way, and this is the quote on your bulletin cover today. She writes, in a very real sense, the Christian community lives in Advent all the time. It can well be called the time between, because the people of God live in the time between the first coming of Christ, incognito in the stable in Bethlehem, and his second coming in glory to judge the living and the dead. And then skipping to the last line, Advent contains within itself the crucial balance of the now and the not yet that our faith requires. So in Advent, we we not only look back to how Jesus came into the world and, and the stories that we'll hear over the next several weeks, but we also hold out in hope for the future that God will bring when Jesus returns. And so in the meantime, in that time between, we get ready for that future. We live as people who have caught a glimpse uh, of the glorious day coming, uh, and we live as people defined by that day and not by the night, to use Paul's metaphor. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, he writes. Let us live honorably as in the day. But it isn't just about avoiding the things that Paul lists in verse 13 or simply just trying to do the opposite of them. Uh, The gospel is never just about doing good or trying to prove how good we can be on our own. The clue comes in verse verse 14. It is only when we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Earlier he said, put on the armor of light, and now he gets more specific. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, it's only when our lives are so closely joined to the life of Christ at work in us by the power of his Spirit that we can't help but live into the glorious light of the day he will bring. And the flesh, which is the counterpart to spirit in Paul's spirituality, is robbed of its power when we put on Christ and more fully live in him. We live in the time between. And we put on Christ as we wait for the age to come. We participate in a very real sense. Yes, we participate in the coming of God's kingdom. But we do not bring God's kingdom. We can't corral God's future and bring it into the present. One of the things that apocalyptic texts tell us is that it is only an act of God. God is the primary agent 
in the revealing and unfolding of God's future, and we participate in that work. No one knows, the gospel tells us, the day nor the hour, only God the Father. So be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. It is truly an awesome reality to belong to God, the creator of all things, and to belong to Jesus Christ, who will return to judge the quick and the dead, as the creed says. But let us not forget who this judge is. He is the same one who loved sinners and gave his life for them. The one who will sit in the judge's seat in the last days is the very one who died on the cross for the sins of the world. What comfort does the return of Christ to judge the quick and the dead give you? Asks the Heidelberg Catechism. That in all affliction and persecution I may await with head held high the very judge from heaven who has already submitted himself to the judgment of God for me and has removed all curse from me. So friends, this Advent, let us wake up and let us hold our heads high. Christ has come. Christ will come again. Alleluia. Amen.